everyone and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. Just starting off here on my color palettes page on Pinterest. Have a camouflage commission request. So I'm searching some kind of color combos that I think we could put together for some nice mandalas. I think I have a pretty good idea and you'll always see them here on my page. The most latest ones that I'm working on. So let's see what we're going to work on today. I have this stone here that I created using a mold from Happy Dotting Company. And we're going to start with a black base background, just a matte black. Whatever colors you use, deco art, folk art, whatever it is, just a matte black. And we're just going to use a sponge brush to put that on, less streaking. And we're going to let that dry. And you can see here I have the center dot on there. So I'm going to take my silicone stencil here, which is also from Happy Dotting Company, and just kind of etch in some guidelines for us so we can see where we're placing our dots a little bit easier. And that's what it looks like. Happy Dotting Company also makes these fun tools. So I'm going to use a couple of those. I'll be using various tools and brushes, but I'm just using butter, buttermilk for our center dot. And now I have eucalyptus leaf and I'm going to pull some swipes into the center. Just using an angled dotting tool and then sometimes I can get the tail to work right. So I pull it down but sometimes they'll just use the pointy end of the etcher to just kind of shape it a little nicer. It just depends on how you want it to look. I'm just using the angled dot stylus. I'm pulling it down towards the center and we'll do one on each of these marks. So these stencils really will help you keep your symmetry if that's a challenge for you. This will help you keep your mandala symmetry. So back to that happy dotting flat tool. And I'm going to be using a light lime green. Actually this one is soft jade. And I decided halfway through that I wanted the dots in a little bit. So that last one, yes, I do make mistakes here and there <laughs> or things that I don't necessarily want. So I'm just going to scrape that off with a silicone tool. It's gentle and that way it doesn't scrape my base coat. And I let it dry quick and then just paint your base coat back over it. You can use brushes, another silicone tool. Just paint it right back over that once it's dry and it will be like it never happened. So I'm basically just going to move that dot in because you can see the rest of the ones around that were in a little bit farther. I'll even use my fingers. I just kind of blend it in or a brush, finger, silicone tool, just kind of blend it back into the background. And then once that's dry, we'll put another dot of that soft jade back out there. It is with the four size four dot tool. And now it's kind of in line with its friends here. So now I have my etcher tool and we're going to use some cocoa, it's a lighter brown. And I'm going to just kind of pull these just so they have a tail. So I'm not actually making it like a swipe. It actually has a bulbous end kind of. I don't know how to explain that, I guess, but just one pull out of it so that you're not necessarily shaping it into the end. But it's just for a different shape. And we'll do that all the way around in between each of these eucalyptus leaf swipes. Now, all the tools and stuff that I use in this video, I'll put in the description if you're wondering what I'm using, even the Lazy Susan, everything. Back to that eucalyptus leaf because we're going to bring that out to our outer circle here. And I'm back with the four. Happy Dotting Company, this is flat on the bottom. It's not a ball, it's flat on the end. 
similar to acrylic rods. Now I am going with some Venetian gold from DecoArt Metallics and this is just an angled paintbrush but you can use a very small dotting tool and just kind of walk your dots around each of the eucalyptus. So with your tool you'll actually have the paint kind of running off the tool as you work your way around the circle so the dots will get smaller but with a paintbrush all it is is pressure. So you see it push down a little bit harder for the larger dots at the top and as you work your way around just kind of lighten up the pressure so that you're just getting the tip of the paintbrush to touch. So it does take a little bit of practice and if you're using tools just use a small dotting tool and go ahead and walk them around. This is Venetian gold. Hope you all have been doing well. I know it's been a while. We have been extremely busy. Farm, and a little vacation we took to South Carolina. It was fun. And just a lot of, you know, family time and getting organized. My youngest did swim lessons. It was a lot of fun. So we have been busy, but now I'm working on a commission again here. So I figured I'd show you one of them because it's kind of a different design and it's fun. I use multi-tools and brushes, so it can give you kind of a feel for how to handle a couple different situations, like removing paint off the stone or, you know, using tools or brushes or whatever. Just kind of having fun with it. So I like to try on most of my pieces to kind of keep the colors going throughout the whole piece. It's a little harder sometimes on the smaller stones, but... So this is back to the buttermilk again which we used in our center. I'm putting a ring of buttermilk around the Venetian gold here. So as always too, I just want to remind you guys, if you want to get notified each time I put out a video, you need just to hit subscribe button on this video. And then you'll have to click on the bell. I guess they're doing that only for notifications as I post, as any of the YouTubers post. So if you hit the bell on any of those videos, then you'll get a notification saying that person has put a new video out. So it looks like, you know, I'm just kind of willy nilly going around. And I promise I'm not counting. I just kind of go with the flow of how many I can fit down to the bottom and then start on the other side. Don't get caught up in saying, okay, I need nine on this side. There was nine on this side. I got to have nine on that side. And also don't try to do it exactly to mine because this stone is like a three inch stone, but you may be working on something larger or smaller. So don't stress about getting the exact amount of dots. As long as you just have that section of color in there, once it's all done, you'll see it all works really nicely together. I apologize a little bit for the shakiness. I had to switch to using a different camera and it doesn't seem to be as much, it doesn't have like a stabilizer in, in it. So anytime I holder shakes or the desk shakes it seems to just be wobbling just a little bit so I will work on that now that I can see it happening here and as always if you guys have constructive criticism or tips to add or just want to say hello or ask questions feel free in the comments to just go ahead and post those there and I try to get back to everyone as soon as I can so this is again with the angled paintbrush and now I'm using white. I don't know if you can quite tell that it is a shade lighter than the buttermilk yellow but you can uh, see barely on my on the color scheme for mine and everybody's you know everybody's monitor is different so and from phone to <laughs> phone to TVs to computers who knows what we're watching them on these days.
So you can see each time I'm putting a little bit larger of a white dot at the top there. You can see that I just go around the edge here but I'm still using the same brush. So it is just pressure and the first dot, I just kind of wiggle it around into a bigger circle, bigger dot, because I wanted it a little bit larger. And then with these ones, I just kind of let up a little bit on the pressure as I go around to get them to be smaller. See this, I just kind of swirl it around and then you get a bigger dot. So you can do this with brushes, but it does take a little bit of practice. So don't get frustrated. You can do this. And if not, just use the tools that you've been using. If you're comfortable with using certain tools, please, by all means, just stick with those because trying to learn halfway through how to do something, it's, it can be challenging. And sometimes just your muscle memory is so good with a certain thing. That's just what you grab first. So now I'm switching to an angled stylus here and I'm putting some espresso, rich espresso from the metallics line. And then my etcher tool, the metal end, is very pointy, so we're just going to use that to kind of drag that teardrop shape into the space between each of those elements that we made beforehand. This is such a handy tool. I, I find it so helpful for so many things. You know, I etched in the stencil marks. So afterwards, all you do is wipe it with a damp cloth. You don't even have to erase. You don't have to use pencil or chalk or any of that. This, you just wipe it with a damp cloth or you just even wait until you varnish it and they'll disappear. Once it's wet, those lines go away. You don't have to worry about seeing lines from your stencils. That also is only with a base coat, I will say. Scratching it onto rock can be a little challenging and it might damage your stone. And I'm really laying this on thick, you can see. It's a heavy, heavy dot. So sometimes too, depending on what surface you're painting on, um, putting the paint on this thick, it will run a little. You need it a little fluid for dots, but you just kind of have to be cautious if you're, like if this were a vertical thing I was painting on, it probably wouldn't hold the dot as well. But the multi-surface paints work pretty well for that because they're a little bit thicker. And then you can do things like glass and mugs. All right, so now I'm switching to a color that I just adore. In fact, I'm almost out of it. It's called Peridot, and it is the Extreme Sheen line. So I use the brushes or try to because it makes them a little easier to work with. They can be a little tackier. So if you see, even pulling my brush up, there's a little bit of a string. Definitely with tools, there's a string that comes up from it, the string of paint. So let it drop back down into your dot before you pull your tool away. Otherwise, it will leave a string line just on your whatever you're painting. <laughs> so straight back up with the tool and even with the brushes. The brushes, it's a little bit easier to kind of break that string, but I swirl it around a little bit. And then it kind of loses the connection, see? All right, so now I want to show you all something. I hear a lot of people having trouble or saying they're having trouble with using the metal edge of the etcher tool. I think part of what it is is you just have to make sure that you're wicking the paint to the piece. So see, I have it like I'm holding it like a pencil. So it's a bit on an angle and make sure the paint touches so that it's kind of connected to the piece and then you can work with it if that makes sense. So see there I started and it wasn't connected. Now it's connected. Because sometimes with dotting too, it won't necessarily make a dot vertically. You just have to make sure the paint grabs the surface. We're just doing some tiny swipes here down either side. The 
And I'm using white. I said we like to carry the colors throughout the piece, so we use white on the outside. I just want to pull it in too. And do some swipes down the either side of the cocoa. And they're in a little bit of an arc too. It kind of gives it a little different detail. So just kind of follow the th how it gets thinner down each of those cocoa swipes. You'll see I do a lot of moving too because I want to make sure that I have a good angle and that I'm not dipping my hand in because those peridot ones still are wet and I already got myself with one of them. I don't want to dip and dip my finger in it and then drag it to another part of the stone because I really rest my hand to make sure that it's steady. So I use it kind of like a tripod. There are wrist rests though and other ways of, of doing this. Make kind of like a tripod with your hand, your other hand, just to kind of steady it a little bit. But you can see that pear dot right in front of you, the green dot. I smushed. <laughs> so I'll have to go back and adjust that after, but it happens. And a lot of times I'll wait. I'll work on multiple different pieces at once so that I can wait for a round of dots to dry before I start working on other sections of a piece, which is helpful, but... All right, that's dry, I fixed it. <laughs> now we're gonna switch to some top dots on this soft jade with the white again to just kind of brighten that up. Now that the camouflage th theme was a challenge in my mind at first, but I'm really excited about how these stones are turning out. Greens and golds and browns, they look really nicely nice together. All right, so this is an Artistro metallic paint pen. And now I will say these are one of the only brands that I've found that do not run after you varnish, as you varnish. It don't ble bleed or run. I wait until they're thoroughly dry and then you can varnish over them just fine. But they're great for highlighting and doing little fine detail work. I'm just going to put some dots that are, this is kind of like a an evergreen aquamarine I'm just going to put some dots down our eucalyptus swipes here in the middle. Just to kind of have a different effect. And they're metallic. This one is shiny, so it reflects nicely. Okay, now going back to our cocoa color. Now I'm using the brush here. A, because I'm more comfortable with the brushes, but B, my spacing was a little bit off. And I don't know if you can tell that, but as you go around, see I did a couple of bigger dots. Well, these two are a little closer, so it has to be a little bit smaller dot on the first cocoa dot, the larger one. So you can kind of tell the one on the left is larger. But this is like, the brush is the way I kind of finagle them into the space. If I want the color there. And you have to make sure that you can kind of fit whatever design you're adding to the mandala in there. But even with the stencil, my spacing was not perfect. <laughs> Honestly, I have trouble being confined to spaces, so I generally don't use stencils. But I just wanted to show you all, all that they are out there. And Happy Dotting makes them to fit her stones. She has multiple sizes. They fold nicely. Here is another paint pen that I've used recently in... I am actually really happy with these ones. They're like a paintbrush marker. They're from Artx, A-R-R-T-X. And these are actually acrylics, um, but they're super fun. You can just kind of like create these little teardrop petal shapes too. And I just figured I'd test out a few more. I have not had trouble varnishing the, these ones either. And I might come back around because the only thing I will say about some of them is sometimes the coverage is not as dark as I would want, as bright. See that one I squeezed a little more on the paint. So if you look from the left to the right one right now, the left one is a little thin on the paint and this one's a little thicker. But again, it's like your tools, you know, it's something that you have to kind of practice working with just to kind of see how they work for you, what kind of things you can do with them, how the, how the paint works on there. Some of them I might go back over. 
Also, I apologize for my giant fingers again. I'm using the different camera, so the angling and trying to paint around the camera here without a zoom is a challenge. <laughs> oh, I kind of wonked that one up. That'll be all right. So part of the thing too about painting is not you're not a machine. Just enjoy creating and enjoying the process, like having some meditation time to just be on your own and create something pretty. It's just, I can't say how therapeutic it is, and I really just hope that that's what people are getting out of this. And if you're not, then maybe take a break or try another hobby for a bit. But you can see how fun that starts to just develop just from changing up little portions of each part that we put in. All right, so that Peridot color that I have, I got a marker to match from Artistro too. <laughs> they have a metallic Peridot, which again is almost gone and I need to get some more because these are awesome. But these are great as you can see for other little fine detail work. You could use liner brushes to do this. Um, I do find it challenging with the extreme sheens to get really fine details just because it is a thicker paint. Um, and I have yet to thin those to try them, but especially when I have the marker that works so well. <laughs> but we're just gonna put these little curls along the outside to kind of give it a daintier, leafy look. And then I'm just pulling it down into the base of each of those. I'm just gonna see I get in a pattern so these ones I'm gonna do real quick going one direction just because it's easier for me. I don't know about how you all work but the way my brain works it's just muscle memory so do all the left side ones first and then I'll come back and do the right side ones. think that this will be the last detail that we add on this one. Not bad for a camouflage palette, although I don't think we'll be blending in anywhere in camo for this kind. <laughs> Not really going to work for the soldiers. This was kind of a quick one too. I mean, it only took us, what, half an hour? To create this real time but also that's because I didn't wait for dots to dry because I was impatient and excited to get this out to y'all but you can see this goes on pretty well one coat and now we have our lovely little stone so I back these with felt usually depends on what the client wants for this one but I have easels I have little feet that are like silicone feet um, different ways of backing them but usually felt and then they can be set nicely on something. So I hope you guys had fun doing this with me. I really enjoyed it. And I am so glad to be back finally for another video with y'all. I'd love to hear what you have for comments or just say hi, where you're from. And I look forward to doing many more of these with you. Have a great day. Happy painting.